So we're going to start with cashew. Um, and so the, with this recipe, this is um, from the book uh, Advanced Pastry Arts by Chef Andy Shabana. Um, and so this is his recipe. I just really like the way it makes. You don't have to make too many alterations to it. And it's pretty quick. Um, so in the pot, I have milk, cream, sugar, salt, and butter. I'm going to bring that to a boil. While that's coming to a boil, I'm going to sift my um, 130 grams of all-purpose flour and 130 grams of bread flour. I think it just makes it easier for the product to go into the liquid mixture if you sift it first and to get rid of lumps. So we're gonna bring this liquid to a boil. So pate choux is cooked twice. It's cooked once on the stove and then once baked in the oven. Okay, so this is the, about the only dough that you'll do that. Um, you have to make sure that you cook this for two minutes to get the proper amount of moisture and to coat the proteins. So it's very important. All right, so it's coming to boil. I'm gonna turn it down slightly so I don't make a mess. So I'm down to like eight, so it's still boiling. When it's boiling, it's moving the fat around. And so that's what we want. And then with our flowers and the pastry parchment paper, while it's boiling, we can add and stir. Just dump it in all at once. And then stir and start your timer. So we do this so that our fats will be evenly distributed when we add our flour so that we won't, they won't separate. And you would see it separating in the oven. Okay, so it's something you'd be like, oh, it looks fine. But you'll go and you'll look in the oven and you'll see the fat just coming to the surface. Not good. All right, so I'm gonna turn this down. I don't want it to burn, so I'm going to take it down to seven. And next door, that would be one dot under medium. Okay. And I'm going to stir this while it's cooking. Um, so we're getting rid of moisture. Then we're cooking our proteins, and we're also getting a nice skin on the bottom of the pot. So make sure you use a timer for this part. Okay, don't just guesstimate. You have plenty of timers for you guys to use. So with working with pot shoe, it's all about the amount of moisture that's in your product um, before you pipe it. So we're going to slowly add our eggs, but it all starts with how much moisture we evaporate here in the cooking process on the stove. Okay, all right, time's up, so turn it off. And then we're going to go into the mixing bowl. Remember when lifting up your pot, it, it's really heavy, okay? So grab from underneath. Don't grab it up top and try to twist. It'll hurt your wrist. Um, and then it's just easier to pour things that are heavy. This has got a really big, thick skin on the bottom. All right, kettle attachment. We're going to turn this on slow. So, um, so one or two. And so all we're doing here is we're trying to cool the dough down to um, 140 degrees or until it's warm to the touch. So what we're going to be looking for is to be able to touch the bowl. Right now, if I touch my bowl, I'm, I'm going to kind of burn my hand, okay? So when it's, you still want it to be warm. Okay, 140 degrees, it's still warm. But you don't want it to be so warm that when you add your eggs, that it cooks the eggs, okay? So, I'm actually just going to set to two. We want to make sure our eggs are scrambled before adding them because um, it'll help the pet to chew to absorb the moisture or the eggs a little bit easier. We're going to add our eggs a little bit at a time, making sure that they get absorbed. Okay, so we, I have a certain texture. We want this to be before we start piping. Kind of like macaroons last week. We had a certain consistency we needed. 
Okay. Same with this week. We have a certain consistency we need. So we're not going to just dump our eggs in there. You have to pay attention. There's quite a few telltales so that you know when you're there. All right. So when I can put my hand and leave it on there for a few seconds, that's good. Okay. So I'm going to take my eggs and I'm going to add like one egg at a time and then let it get absorbed. And so right now when you look at it, it's kind of dull. Okay. It doesn't have any shine to it and it looks dry. Okay. So those are two of the things we're going to look for is we're going to look for it to be shiny and moist. Okay. So we should be using the majority of the eggs. We just might not use 100% all of them, all right? So as soon as the egg is absorbed, add another one. You don't have to go super slow, but we just want to go slow enough and that the egg is absorbed. And my speed is on two, okay? So if we have time, this is your midterm exam. I kind of moved it later in the semester in case we need today, I was just going to remove the midterm exam. But if we get to have one, this is what we're making, exactly what we're doing today. Okay? So you should be taking good notes on what this should look like, because I'm going to expect you to take good notes, and I don't have to tell you how to do it. Not that you can't ask questions, but... All right, you can see it's starting to stick together, and maybe after this egg, it'll start getting stringy. So what I mean by stringy is when the paddle goes around, you'll see the dough kind of hanging on both the wall and the paddle, and so you'll see like string like goes with it. So that's going to be the first thing that's going to tell us we're getting close. Not quite yet. So notice I'm not going fast. It's not about getting the air into our product. It's more about incorporating our products together. Okay? All right. Starting to get that stringy now. You see how it's kind of hanging on the wall and the paddle? And so it's getting kind of the stringiness to it. I'm going to add just a half an egg more. Um, because I'm getting my stringy, it looks moist. Okay? And I'm getting the shine. And the shine you really can see when you look at the center of the paddle. What's still hanging on the paddle is usually where you start to see the shine. Okay, in the center. Let's see. Can you see if I turn it off, how it you guys see. See this side? Or right there? It's starting to look shiny. You see the light reflection off of it? Okay. So I'm going to do just a half an egg more, and then I'm going to let this get in, and then I'm going to evaluate it. I'm going to take it off. I'm going to scrape it all the way down. So this is the first time I'm going to scrape it, making sure that I'm getting all of the products off the bottom, okay? And everything is getting mixed in well from the paddle, okay? If this is not a smooth batter, then you'll, it'll show in your dough when you pipe it, okay? So it's absorbed, so I'm going to turn off. So one of the first things we're going to see is, see how this kind of hangs? It's called a beard, okay? So we want it to kind of hang like that, so like a, a goatee, right? All right, so we're first going to scrape off everything from the paddle. And then make sure you scrape the bowl completely. Make sure to get all the way down the bottom because that's where the drier stuff is going to be. Put it back on the mixing. We're going to mix it just a little bit more. to see when it should look moist, not dry. So look moist to you? Yeah. 
The next thing I want to see was that beard and that stringiness. Those are going to come together. And then the third thing I want to check is I want you to take your finger and I want you to go to your big knuckle, not the little knuckle, the big knuckle, okay? So I want you to go about that deep in the dough, okay? And I want you to run your finger through it. And what you should see is it should slowly start to move. If it hangs out, then you don't have enough egg. If it falls quickly, you've added too much egg and we need to start over. Which is why it's better to add your egg slowly because you can always add more. Can't take it out, right? So I want you to do all of those. Look to see if it's shiny. Look to see if you got the beard and stringy. And then lastly, how slow it falls. Okay, it should fall. All right, this dough, more than any other, not that you ever want anything on the outside of your piping bag, but this one in particular is going to be very difficult to pipe if you have anything out. And whoever let the scales up here, not now, but please put them away. I know they're not mine. All right, so what you're going to do next is I have these lines on here for you. So you got the thick lines and you got skinny lines, all right? And so those are going to help you to know where to pipe. So eclair should be nice and long. We want it to be about four inches long. I chose the tip because that's going to tell you how wide it should be, okay? I'm going to leave the bed, the tip, um, the bag uncut when I start. Okay, so I'm going to leave that on there for now so that when I put my dough in, it doesn't come straight out the bottom. All right, so put about half of the dough into the bag. So make sure you have a nice big collar. This is where you're going to want to use a bowl scraper. And you can press down the dough with the bowl scraper, okay? So I'll use the metal scraper because it'll rip the bag. Make sure your hands are clean. Make sure the outside of the bag is clean. Okay? I need to work. All right. So after your tip is pushed down as far as you can, you take your scissors and you just go around. Try to get close to the tip opening because you're going to be pressing a lot. If you're too far back, then the tip's going to pop out. So try to go close to the tip opening about a quarter of an inch from the end and just run your scissors around so that you can take that off. Okay, so not a whole lot of space. And then what I want you to do is you're going to follow the dark line, okay? So you're going to hold the bag kind of low, unlike with our macaroons. So macaroons we went high, this time we want oval. So we're going to Pipe it so it starts at the skinny line and goes to the next skinny line, all right? So, and we want them to be as wide as the black strip, maybe a little bit wider than the black strip. When I get to the end, I'm going to stop, and I'm going to push up and kind of wipe it off so I don't get a big, long tail. I'm going to go to every other one. And I want to go just slightly wider than that black line. A nice smooth pipe, stop, and then wipe it off. Slightly wider than that black line. All right? And then what you're going to do is you're going to go in between that line that you skipped. This one you're going to hit in the next row. Try to be careful. When you're piping, to have your line a nice, even thickness. Okay, if you go too fast, they're going to be too thin. If you go too slow, they're going to be too thick. And if you go anywhere in between, you're going to see those lines. Okay, and we don't want to see those lines. So try to be even, push, and release. When you're done piping, 
pull out the paper that does not add flavor to your product. Okay, we want to make sure we take these out. Do not take them. Make sure your name is somewhere that the dough won't grow. And then I want you to take a tissue brush and that leftover egg, add a little bit of water to that to thin it out. And then you're going to take a little bit of egg wash and just lightly go over it. So this is going to help you if you have these ridges to kind of thin them out. It's also going to add a nice brown to your cut to shoe or your eclair shell. If you have anything sticking up, like from when you piped, this is a great time to kind of press that down so it won't burn. So when pat to shoe bakes, we have this glorious thing called steam. Okay, and by having enough moisture in our dough, the steam is going to cause this to rise quite a bit. Okay, so the steam is going to push open into those air cells, give us rise, and then once when those uh, proteins and the flour set then it'll hold its shape, okay? But as soon as cold air gets to that product, the steam escapes. Well, the steam that's holding it up is now gone, so it's gonna flatten out because the proteins aren't ready yet, okay? So it's a very delicate, make sure that you don't keep getting in and out of the oven. And also make sure you don't pull it out before it's done completely, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull some out of mine oven periodically so that you guys can see what is wrong and what exactly we're looking for, okay? Um, one of the things I will be looking for is consistent in size and shape. So make sure you pipe them just slightly larger than that black line, slightly wider. And then if you have any wrinkles in it, like here we got those wrinkles and I got this point sticking out. So what I want you to do is you can use your pastry brush at this time with that little bit of egg wash on there and try to level it out, smooth it, and make sure that that point isn't there anymore. So it bakes more evenly, okay? So even if you didn't pipe it quite great, this can help you out, all right? Notice I'm not using much egg wash at all. And there is enough dough in here that you can do a half sheet tray as well as a full. We don't want them to be closer together, so don't try to squeeze all the dough on the one. All right, so you can do a half sheet tray as well. These are gonna go in the oven on uh, 300 degrees, so it's a little bit cool. All right, it's gonna take a while before we take out or before we check it for the first time. Whatever you do, do not sit there and open and shut that door 50 times, okay? If I haven't pulled mine out, yours are not going to be ready, all right? So very important because you don't want to see the head on and they'll collapse. Then you might say, well, they look fine on top, but what's happening is underneath where the dough is softer, it actually kind of pulls up. So I'm going to show you all that so you know what to look for and how to avoid it. I'm telling you now. Don't open your oven door until you have a nice color brown, okay? And I'll show you what that nice color brown is. Any questions? Did you guys write all that down so when you do it on your midterm practical that you know what not to do? Real quick, before I put these in the oven, what I, the way I want you to do your bag, and because we're going to be doing the, um, where's your bag shot? Because we're going to be doing the pad shoot filling it twice, this makes your life easier, okay? So what I want you to do is I want you to have one bag with the tip, and then you're going to have a second bag. Fill the bag, then cut the tip, drop it in here, and then you're going to pipe with two bags. And then when you go to add the second, you can just pull out the one bag 
and put in a, a second bag. So if you go ahead and put your dough in two bags, so you're going to three day bags all day. One for tip, two for dough. Okay, put half and half in, and then that way it changes in and out easily from, and you use the same tip. Does that make sense? Hold on. I'm, I'm getting question marks. So you're going to put half your dough in one bag and the other half in another. Once you have all your products in the bag, that's when you're going to cut the tip. You're going to take this bag and put it inside this bag. And then this way, when you pipe, you pipe in two bags, okay? When you run out of dough, you just take out the middle bag and put it in a new middle bag and then go. Make sense now? Okay, this helps with air and it also helps keep the bag clean and it helps you move faster, okay? All bonuses. I want to talk to you about the pad of shoe and what we're looking for, okay? So I took them out as the time progressed so you can see what happens and the difference. So this is the first one that came out and it's really flat, okay? So all there's almost none of the steam or none of the uh, proteins from the gluten set up, okay? Start to sit coagulate. Starches sit and gelatinize, and the eggs sit and coagulate, okay, which is going to give us our structure, all right? So this one looks a little bit better, right? It's holding its shape, but if you look at the bottom, it's sunken in at the bottom, and we don't want that, all right? So this one's looking better. Um, it's got a nice brown color to it, and it's kind of held its shape, but it's really soft. So from this one, I left it in just a few more minutes. We want this to be kind of firm, so it'll hold its shape. And then on the inside, there should be a nice big open cell, okay? So we can fill it. So it should be firm, and it should hold its shape. So when you're checking to see if yours is done, what you want to do is just reach in, quickly pull only one out. Do not pull out the whole tray and say, Chef, is this done? Pull out one, and then show that to me and I'll help you, okay? So um, what happens if you pull out the whole tray? The steam will escape and then you can't get it back, okay? So pull out only one and look at it and see and we'll assess it from there, all right? Any questions about the pad of shoe and when to pull it out? I did not turn mine around because I didn't want to lose my steam, okay? All right. So there's a couple ways to fill the flares. Um, one is using a tip um, that you would squeeze it in there, kind of like the way they fill um, uh, ho hos or host kingdoms, right? You see the little white dots at the bottom? That's because they have a, a tip that goes in there and squirts in the filling. Um, it gets a little bit hard to do with your hand. Um, and the patient cream because that tip is so small. So um, what we're going to do is we're going to cut these and you're going to cut them on. Don't cut them on the table and don't cut them in your hand. And you're going to cut them in half so they look like a hot dog bun, okay? Make sure you don't cut it in your hand and don't cut it on my, on my table. Once when you get them all cut, so you do one step at a time, okay? All right, so you can do this either way. I like to have my tip where it's going to be and then cut it. If you don't like doing that, then you can mark kind of where it's going to be. With this tip, you need to make sure you're up all the V's, okay? You don't want the bag to cover any of those V's. So this is why I like to make sure that it's in here. So make sure, this is always the same, guys. It's nothing special with the pad of shoe. You should always have the, uh, the product in the palm of your hand so you can squeeze with one hand. 
And then what we're going to do is we're going to open this up and we're going to make sure we fill our eclairs just enough so that we can shut them, but they're, it's filled all the way. Okay? So you're going to do one at a time. And you should be wearing gloves for this. And that's not because of COVID. That's because whenever you're working with products that are not to be baked anymore, you should be wearing gloves, right? Food Service 101. So keep in mind, you got a big empty shell in there. Make sure you fill it enough. There's nothing worse than going to bite into an eclair. There's no filling. All right, so we're going to take our ganache. And the reason why we waited to make our ganache until the end is because ganache thickens up as it cools down. And I want this to be fluid and not setting up. Okay, so that's why it was the last thing I did. All right, so you're going to take, this is the cut side, right? You're going to hold on to the bottom. You're going to leave with the, with the closed side of your eclair. And you're going to just kind of dip it a little bit and then wipe off the side. And you should just have enough to coat the top. And it should be nice and smooth. And if you have too much on it, if you do it and you have way too much ganache, you can kind of wipe it off a little bit and then wipe the sides. Just be careful that you don't do what I just did and you then make it so you have an empty spot. Okay? I'm going to roll this and use the wear gloves because we're not going to put them again, right? Make sure you don't put too much ganache on there. If you have too much cream, you want to close it and then wipe off the excess. All right? You shouldn't get messy when you're eating in a fire. You should have enough on here that it coats the top, but not so much that it's dripping off the sides. So just a little bit. All right? So clean sheet pan, clean piece of parchment, 